In this video we will discuss the basic meshing principles in SLB software. The same principles apply in RCB and PTD with some additional complexity arising from having multiple levels in RCB and tendons and support lines in PTD. Meshing in RCB and PTD is covered in separate videos. This video will cover not only the basic meshing principles and related settings but also illustrate inputting thicknesses. Inputting of vertical loads is covered in a separate video. The same model used in this video was created in SLB Geometry Editing and Bitmap Import video. So far we have created geometry lines for the slab outline, the voids, balconies and folds, as well as walls, columns and beams. However, note that if we try to left click to select a slab, like we have done for other elements, nothing is picked up by the software. This is because the finite element mesh has not been created yet. To create a mesh means to break down the model geometry into smaller elements which can be analyzed by the finite element software. Inductor uses triangular mesh elements. The mesh is created automatically by the software based on the model geometry using a set of rules which will be covered in this video. To ensure that the model runs smoothly and produces reliable results, the mesh needs to be completed without any errors. Therefore, a thorough understanding of the meshing principles is required to operate the software. Fixing up meshing errors and related tools are covered in detail in other videos. To mesh the model, press the Mesh button on the Home tab or use the F5 shortcut. In the Meshing dialog, we can change the mesh subdivision. This controls the size of triangular finite elements used by the mesh. The software will create a triangular element with a side dimension equal to the selected size. Note that the mesh can squeeze into gaps smaller than the defined mesh size. The smaller the number, the finer the mesh, the larger the number of nodes and the more accurate are the results. The model will also take longer to run. It is up to the user to select a mesh size that balances speed and accuracy. Depending on the size and intricacy of the model and what stage the design is in, different mesh size will be suitable. Say, if the model is larger, 2-3 meter mesh can be used during the preliminary design stage to increase the speed. For this video, let's leave the mesh size at 1 meter. Some additional mesh settings are available under Model and Solver Settings dialog. These settings will allow the user to create a more refined mesh around the walls on both transfer and non-transfer floors. The mesh is automatically created without having to define any mesh subdivisions like in other general purpose finite element software. Once the mesh is created, we can see in the meshing report that there are no meshing errors. This is expected because the geometry of the model is relatively simple and straightforward. More complex models, especially with many diagonal elements, will produce meshing errors on the first run. Fixing these errors will be covered in other videos. Let's examine the mesh created closely to understand the meshing principles. Looking at the geometry lines, we can see that the finite element nodes are created along the geometry line and at each geometry line node. We can use the analytical model tool to highlight how the mesh is being created. The function is available from the Tools tab or using Shift-A shortcut. The geometry line nodes and other important geometry objects are now highlighted. Note that the mesh fills up all available space by generating extra nodes between the existing geometry. If we zoom in on the lift shaft, we can see that the mesh nodes are created along the wall center line, but the spacing of the nodes is smaller to increase the accuracy of the results around the wall. Note that there are a series of small mesh elements around the lift core. This is because we have originally created the geometry line on the inside face of the shaft. So the mesh nodes were created along the wall center line and the geometry line. Pulling the geometry line back to wall center line will simplify the model geometry. Note that the slab is still supported as the walls provide support at the center lines. The warning tells us that the mesh will be deleted as we are altering the model geometry. Note while moving geometry line nodes, snap to corner setting is being used. After the new mesh is created, we will zoom in on the same area to see the changes. The mesh has changed and is cleaner now. 
This practice will help us to ensure that the models run smoothly and produce reliable results. Looking at the beams, we can see that the mesh is created similarly to the walls. A series of finite element nodes are placed along the beam center line. Now for columns, a single finite element node is created at the centroid of the column section. Again, we can see that the software starts by placing nodes on top of the structural elements, then fills up the available space between the slab perimeter by adding extra nodes. The distance between the nodes is controlled by the mesh size. After the mesh is complete, note that SOB recognizes flooded areas, which are bound by geometry lines and can be selected. If you left click to select a few of these slab zones, they will be highlighted. Each of these flooded areas is a slab zone where a different slab thickness, material or pressure load can be applied. We are now ready to input the slab thicknesses. Press zoom extends to see the entire model, then press escape to clear the mesh view. By default, the slabs are assigned 200mm thickness. We can color slabs by thickness by pressing the slab thickness button in the view tab. To assign a slab thickness, simply select a slab zone by left clicking, then enter the thickness in meters in the property table. Press enter to commit the value. If we left click on an empty area in the model, we can see that the slab thickness's colors have been updated. To create a void, select a slab zone and assign a thickness of 0 to it. Continue in the same manner to apply the thicknesses for the rest of the model. Once again, let's zoom out to see the complete model and verify that the thicknesses have been entered correctly. This concludes this video. To continue working with the model, proceed to SOB load cases and combinations video. Thank you for watching.